As I said in an earlier video, this past week I was supposed to be at Great Smoky Mountains National Park. My first time visiting there, doing some hiking, some camping, some exploring, but due to the current situation I was unable to do that. However, I was going through some of my old footage that I have saved and I found some video and some photos from a hike I did a couple years ago down in Bradford, Pennsylvania, the Morrison Hiking Trail in the Allegheny National Forest. It's not the best video in the world by any way, shape, or form, but it does show a, a cool little hike. I went down there twice that year. I did a hike. I was supposed to stay over both nights, but the one night I ended up hiking the whole trail and decided to just drive home. Second night I definitely stayed. But So I hope you enjoy this look at the Morrison Hiking Trail. And hey, look, another egg. They're everywhere. Enjoy. Morrison Hiking Trail in the Allegheny National Forest. I'm gonna do a one night backpacking trip, test out some of my new deer. Recently got a new uh, ENO double nest hammock. I've substituted it or added to it, I should say, with a bug net, tarp, an underquilt, all that good stuff. So we're gonna head out to the campground, we think. May find a spot along the way as well too. We're check out the campground, see what that's all about. Kinda wanna have a fire tonight. And uh, if not, we'll find a spot along the way. Just an easy, easy hike, and then we'll head out from there. But it's gonna be a great trip. Great. Definitely got some ferns. Great. Wooded. You can see what I can see. Trails pretty even so far. But again, we're not really talking a good whole lot of mileage done. I really want to just test some gear, the shoes, the Achilles. So that's going to be an exciting part too, is the Achilles part. So we're following these gray blazes and uh, we're on our way. But just a really nice forest. So hopefully, yeah, uh, you know, if I don't stay at the campground tonight, hopefully I can find a awesome campsite and once all this looks like there's one right over there but why would I stay so close to the trail when I go over there with the fire ring you can see right over there so but uh yeah why would I do that all right so we are on the trail 5.8 miles to go So, uh, like I said, this is going to be a good test for this weekend. So I got the water filter, the Sawyer Mini. I haven't really had a chance to use that one yet. I've had it for about a year now. And I brought it to Joshua Tree last year. But you weren't really allowed to take any water. And not that there was any to find anyway. But, uh, you know, I brought it in case of an emergency, obviously. And uh, haven't used that yet. I'm also going with the low hikers today. Usually I go with the mid hikers, but since the Achilles injury last year after Joshua Tree, the, I don't think Joshua Tree, I don't think I got injured at Joshua Tree, but when I came back a couple weeks later, I noticed some discomfort. But uh, since then I've been wearing these teen Tardy 2s low pretty much every day since I bought them. And I think I bought them last well, I think I got them in April, actually. So I think I've been wearing them pretty much non-stop for three months or so. I think I even got them more. I think I got them, actually, I'm pretty sure I got them in February, to be honest with you. But uh, that's not important. What's important is I'm testing them out. And I have the inserts, the new ones that I have, uh, with a little heel on them. So we'll see how it goes. Should be a good test. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the campsite I set up that night with my 
hammock and other things I was testing out. However, I do have some of that here right now, so we can take a look at it. Do you wanna see? Let's take a so look. So on that trip, I was using this ENO double nest hammock. This was given to me for my birthday and it was purchased by my parents at Deer for Adventure, Hamburg, New York. I definitely recommend going there. They are the best, and especially during this tough time. We need to support and rally around all of our small businesses and family owned businesses. So if you need outdoor gear, whether it's hammocks, tents, shoes, clothing, maps, a compass, knife, whatever, you do yourself a great favor by going to Deer for Adventure. They also just opened one up in the North Towns on, on uh, I believe it's on Niagara Falls Boulevard. If it's not, it's on Maple. It's right there across from uh, the Boulevard Mall. So definitely check them out. They are the best. So I had this ENO double nest hammock. Now there's a story behind this. Originally the one I got was red. And so my parents had a little bit of a debate about this. Should they get me a red one or this? green and brownish olive colored one. And uh, mom said red, dad said this one, mom won out. Now, what was interesting is that when I was given this, I was told I could go back and just change it for the different color. And of course, this sort of matched my deer. Now I did have a red sleeping bag when I went to Philmont in 2000. And so I can understand why they would have wanted to get me a red one, but you know, this one kind of matches my deer. It's more outdoorsy and of course it relates to being a Boy Scout and a Boy Scout leader. However, in order to keep your warmth in a hammock, remember there's nothing underneath you but air, right? So you either have to put a mat inside there or you have to, you know, which can get a little weird, or you can put what's known as an underquilt underneath your hammock. So I did buy an underquilt. This is my ENO underquilt. What do you know? It is red and gray. So I compromised. I got the colors that everybody wanted me to have, which goes with all the different gear that I've had. So again, this is the ENO brand. You can see their logo there, okay? Now, what you would do is you have these little shock cords here at the end, okay? And this literal, literally would go underneath your hammock like that. So your hammock would sort of be inside there and it would kind of give you an extra level of warmth. So you're not laying on it, you're not compressing it. And you know, it's gonna block out the wind from the sides and it's gonna give you some radiant heat coming up from underneath. That's the thing, when you, like I said, when you lay in a hammock, there's nothing underneath you. Once you lay down on it, the bottom part of a sleeping bag is basically useless because you compress all of that and it flattens it all out and it doesn't really keep you warm. It's the seal around you that keeps you warm and that you have that tight uh, seal of the ground and you have a mat underneath you usually. And so therefore you have the mat, which is reflecting the heat and, and block being that barrier, sleeping bag keeping you warm. This serves that same purpose. So I have the gray and red ENO underquilt. I love this thing, it's super light, it's synthetic. Uh, it still compresses down even though it's synthetic. It does a really nice job of compressing down and it fits into this small little stuff sack. So, I mean, I can go even smaller, of course, if I wanted to do the compression bag, but uh, I have no, have no need at this point to get one. Uh, this is known as the Ember 2 underquilt and it fits my uh, ENO double nest perfectly. Now, I also brought my Big Agnes AirCore insulated, actually it's the Ultra AirCore insulated air mat to go underneath me in my hammock. So I didn't fill this up all the way, obviously, but I gave it just enough so that way it could, it could fit in there and I was laying on top of this as well. It could still move around. It has good dimensions, 25 by 72, so it's a little longer. It's definitely wide enough. I tend to be a side sleeper and I, if it's too narrow, I get a little nervous about rolling off them and I don't sleep that well. So I put this underneath there as well too. And uh, you know, kept me nice and warm. So I had, was, was rocking this plus my underquill. I, could, I you know, it was warm enough. I probably could have just went with one or the other, um, but it was nice just to, you know, I was testing everything out to see what I liked. Remember, I was just practicing. This also went to Joshua Tree National Park with me, and this, was a, this is excellent. It's done on some other things as well, too. It would have been at Great Smoky Mountain National Park. That would have been tent camping, so I would have brought either my small backpacking tent, but most likely I probably would have brought a, a large one. I would have been at a car campsite. Uh, I don't know how much backpacking camping I would have done there. It wasn't really going to be there long enough. I might have, but uh, this definitely would have been there. Or my cot. And even if my cot was there, you'd still need something to sleep on, so... 
Uh, again, same problem. If you just lay on the tot, everything underneath you is going to, you know, keep you cold. There's nothing blocking the air underneath you. So we have that. To attach my hammock to the trees, I have these excellent and very strong ENO Atlas straps. They hold about 400 pounds. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going anywhere and we're not going to fall down. And, you know, I don't slide down during the night. It keeps it in the right proportion. So, you know, hammock camping can be a little bit tricky. You gotta, you know, have your angles right because you don't want to sag in the middle and you don't want to be too taut that, you know, if you flip, you're going to flip literally out of your hammock. So you have to really, you know, you're looking at like 30 degree angles, I believe. And um, so I try and just do a little, you know, I know it's not a 30 degree angle. So all my math teacher friends or whatnot that are maybe watching this, you know, I know that's not quite a 30 degree angle, but I try to do something like that. And then you have a line across the top called a ridge line. And that kind of helps keep everything in order as well too. And then from that ridge line is where I would hang my tarp and where I would attach my bug net. I don't have those to show today. Those are put away. But, you know, so my whole setup that night would have been a tarp to protect from rain. Even though it didn't rain, it protects from the dew and leaves and sticks falling down on you. I had a bug net, obviously, to keep the mosquitoes and other flies out. I had my hammock. I had my air mattress. I had my underquilt. And last but not least, because, you know, I need a little comfort in my life when I do camping. I also I had my... Pillow. So this is another ENO pillow. It's a soft one. I ended up upgrading to another one, a Nemo uh, pillow, which I like a lot better. This is nice, but it tends to slide around a little bit too much. I have this nice little Nemo air pillow. It's about this big all together, and then it, you know you, you blow it up, and it's nice and it's soft. It doesn't and it tends not to slide around. Again, have that locked away. But I was testing this out that night to see how this worked. I was really going with this ENO stuff, um, but. We will see. I, I tend not to, you know, just rely on one company. Uh, you know, my backpack is not ENO brand, so they don't make one in the first place. But you heard I was walking and hiking in, in teen boots. Those tend to fit me best. I need the wide uh, fit. I also need the larger toe box for the different sort of things I have with my orthotics and things that I wear in the shoes. So they have worked out great for me. I have this ENO set for camping. I have a Alps Mountaineering backpacking tent. I have a Coleman car camping tent. I have a Gregory backpack. You know, I've got all sorts of stuff. So I, 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 I go with what works best. I tend to like Columbia gear. I have, but at the same time, you know, I also have things from Gander Mountain. I still have some old stuff from Eastern Mountain Sports that have held up over all these years. I've picked stuff up all over the place. And of course, I usually buy most of the stuff at Gear for Adventure. So again, another shameless plug, but really, especially during this time, go to Gear for Adventure. We will be outside at some point soon. They have what you need to go outside and to hike and to camp and to fish and to kayak and whatever else it might be. So that's what I was using that night. Now the next day I got up and there was a beach road nearby, another park, you had to drive there, but there's a nice beach in, in this Kinzawa Dam area. So I'm going to end the video with some shots from there. Beautiful up on the rocks. There's these great rocks you could, you could climb up and great views across the whole thing. And then there was a beach there. No shots of the beach, unfortunately. But uh, that was that trip. So once this quarantine's over, we'll be able to see more of that. And the bummer here is that I had recently picked up this small action camera. So I could take that with me to... Great Smoky Mountains National Park to take better video, better shots of things and not just kind of walk around with my cell phone trying to hold it up or hold it up this way. But I picked up this action camera. It hasn't been put to use yet, but hopefully sometime soon once I can get out, do some orienteering, do some hiking, do some camping. So back to the great shots. Take a look at these beautiful vistas down at the Morrison Hiking Trail. Mm -hmm.